Hello, I'm Jean-Pierre Bassan. I'm professor of cardiology at the University of Besançon in France, and I'm attending the World Congress of Cardiology in Beijing uh, in June 2010. I've been a member of the scientific program committee and uh, just want to make a few comments about uh, this congress. And the first point I would like to make is that it's a quite good congress, well attended, about 10,000 plus uh, participants so coming from all over the world, not only from China, but from all over the world. And uh, the activity has been intense during these three days, and no doubt it's a big congress, an interesting congress. As regards the program, there is not much to say, because it's more or less the same kind of program that we have in other congresses, like the Congress of the European Society of Cardiology. There is a lot of clinical science, heart failure, intervention, acute coronary syndromes, electrophysiology, venous room embolism, etc. So a lot of uh, uh, sessions dedicated to traditional uh, areas of our disciplines, let's call, let's call them clinical cardiology. There is little, not to say, uh, no basic science. There is, there is actually a program about basic science and most of, of it comes from China but also from Japan and a little bit less from Europe and the United States. But I truly believe that the most important part of the program is dedicated to population sciences and particularly epidemiology. I do not want to enter in details but I just want to comment on two presentations made here in, uh, in Beijing by the group from McMaster University in Canada, in, uh, Mac, in uh, Hamilton, uh, Ontario, in Canada, uh, relating to prevention and epidemiology of cardiovascular disease. One is called uh, Enter Stroke and will be published, published in Lancet next week. Enter Stroke use the same methods as used as in Enterheart, and you may remember that Enterheart involved 23,000 subjects, some free of cardiovascular disease and some suffering from cardiovascular disease, and Enterheart uh, made it possible to identify the risk factors for cardiovascular disease for the development of premature coronary artery disease, particularly infarction, and uh, these factors are well known but Interheart made it possible to weight the different impact of these risk factors on the occurrence of cardiovascular disease and particularly early infarction. Interstroke, same methods and leads to the same result. Actually, this is a, the primary result of a short, let's say, uh, pilot study, but already the results are very interesting because they show that the risk of stroke depends basically on the same factors as observed in interheart. The same factors play the same role, but the weight of hypertension is much more prevalent here in, uh, in interstroke as compared to interheart. But we find again the same factors, diabetes, obesity, hypertension again, dyslipidemia, and of course, Atrial fibrillation, known atrial fibrillation, plays a major role in the development of stroke in these kind of populations. So endostroke will be a major step forward in the comprehension of the risk factors for the development of these diseases. The second important study that also comes from uh, McMaster University has been dedicated to the prevalence and the treatment of uh, hypertension all over the world. This study, epidemiologic study, involved 150,000 subjects all over the planet. There were 70 countries, 150,000 subjects. And what are the outcomes? First of all, awareness of the disease. Awareness of the disease is quite low. Most of the patients who are hypertensive do not know that they are. And the second major important uh, message coming from, from this study is that basically all over the planet, and this is the same in every country, the rate of hypertension among subjects, among the general population, is in the range of 40%. Most of them are not aware of the fact that they are hypertensive, and awareness declines 
with, let's say, the living standards of the population, well-educated population are more aware than less well-educated, poor population are less aware, but usually men are less aware, particularly young men are less aware that they are hypertensive as compared to women. The second or third important message coming from this study is the fact that treatment varies considerably again with the same factors. Hypertension is regularly under-treated and under-treatment is particularly observed in poor countries but also in men. Not only they don't know that they are hypertensive but they are not treated, when they know that they are hypertensive they are poorly treated. So there are very important messages coming from this study. The number one again is a high rate of hypertension in the general population in the range of 40%. The lack of awareness of the disease, lack of awareness of the potential risk of the disease and the, the un, let's say, suboptimal treatment in many patients and particularly in developing countries. That's uh, for me the most important message coming from uh, this uh, Congress uh, the, uh, I would say that the program about population science is by far the most interesting and of course it's a very important uh, it's a part of the program for the attendants, for the attendees, because you may know that many of them come from countries in transitions or countries uh, in, in under development. This was in Beijing and thank you for your kind attention.